Welcome, Elon Musk. Elon, welcome to, uh, to Riyadh. Um, it's been quite an incredible 90 days for you, my friend. Uh, yeah. XAI Colossus it came online 122 days. You're about to double in size again. Uh, the extraordinary success of, of the fifth mission of Starship uh, and the booster capture, amazing. The launch of CyberCab. Starlink helping in disaster relief. Progress with Optimus, the second Neuralink human patient, new record users on X, uh, and that's in 90 days. <laughs> I'm sure I've missed a few things. Welcome. Yeah, I've been playing a significant role in this election. I, I think I, I saw you someplace <laughs> on X dealing with election issues. Um, let's talk a little bit about AI, which is on the tips of everybody's uh, conversations here. Uh, when we spoke last in March at the Abundance Summit, your prediction was that AI was increasing at a rate as fast as 100 times per year, and that by 2029 or 2030, we might see AI as capable as 8 billion humans. Are you still seeing that pace? Yeah, I mean, it's, been, it's, difficult, it's a difficult thing to quantify exactly, but... Um, I certainly feel comfortable saying that it's getting 10 times better per year, which is, you know, let's say it's, you know, four years from now, that would mean 10,000 times better. So maybe a hundred thousand. Yeah. And it's, 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 it, it, I think it will be able to do anything that any human can do. Um, possibly within, within the next uh, year year or two. And then, uh, then it's what, what can it, how, long, how much longer than that does it take to, to be able to do what, what all humans can do combined? I think not, not long, probably only, I don't know, three years from that point. So it, like 20, 2029 is 28, something like that. The other conversation we've had, and you came out on the same side as Jeffrey Hinton in this, was 80% probability it's going to be awesome. 20% probability we're yes. screwed. Are you still, are you still on yeah. those odds? Yeah, I mean, one could say it's, 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 it's most likely going to be great, and there's, there's some chance, which could be 10 to 20%, that um, it goes bad. Um, the chance is not zero that it goes bad, but overall, one we could say that the cover's eighty percent full uh, is one positive way to look at it. Maybe ninety percent. All right, I like that increasing. Uh, yeah. What keeps Mostly, you up? At, yeah. What keeps you up at night besides running six companies? Um, well, about waking this? up early for to participate in uh, uh, talks like this one. <laughs> I, I felt very guilty asking you to, to do this, but thank you for, for joining us on the lease. <laughs> but in, in terms of worrying about the future, um, well, I think AI is, is a significant existential threat and something we should be paying, paying close attention to. Uh, it's, it's probably the most significant near-term threat. The, Longer term than that is the global population collapse. You know, birth rates have been collapsing pretty much worldwide. Um, and we're headed to, you know, a situation where, for example, based on current birth rates, uh, South Korea would have about a third of its current population, perhaps much less. Um, Europe would have about half of its current, current population perhaps much less. And I should say that those numbers are if the birth rate were suddenly to return to stable to, to 2.1 per woman, which is a stability point, um, which it is, it's not doing. So if the, if, if, if the current compounding uh, effect continues, um, you would see really um, many countries become 5% of their current size or less within three generations. I know you've been so doing your... I would consider that to be a very big, very big problem. Um, 
And, and I think if for most countries, they should view the birth rate as, as the single biggest problem they need to solve. Um, I mean, if you don't make new humans, there's no humanity. And, and all the policies in the world don't matter. Hmm. I know you've um, been doing your part to maintain the birth rate in, in the US. Yes, I am. I mean, I, you know, it's, you've got to walk the talk. Um, so I do have a lot of kids, and I encourage others to have lots of kids. But on the AI, and I'm sorry to go negative on this, but what, do you, what, do you, what are you doing right now that's most important for uh, countering that 10% probability of dystopian outcomes? Is there something, or do you, uh, is there a regulation that you're, that you're promoting? How do you think about, uh, you know, the upside will take care of itself. How do you protect against the downside? Well, my, my thing with respect to AI safety is that you have to be, create a maximally truth-seeking AI, uh, which may sound obvious, but that's what I'm seeing being produced is, is not maximally truth-seeking. Um, it tends to be trained to be politically correct, um, and for a lot of the AIs that are being uh, trained in, um, in the San Francisco Bay Area, there are... Uh, that they have, they have taken on the philosophy of the people around them, which kind of makes sense. Uh, so, you know, you have sort of a, a, a woke, um, nihilistic, in my opinion, um, philosophy that is being built into these AIs. Um, and they're being taught to say crazy things in some cases uh, that, are, that are very troubling. Um, like when Google Gemini came out, uh, if people asked, uh, whether it is more, which is worse, misgendering Caitlyn Jenner or global thermonuclear war? And it said misgendering Caitlyn Jenner, which is obviously a problem because, you know, we'd all die in global thermonuclear war. And so if, if you have an AI that's programmed for, for things like that, it could conclude that the best way to ensure that uh, nobody is misgendered is to uh, annihilate all humans, mm. thus making the, the probability of a future misgendering zero. You know, that's highly problematic. Um, so, so you really want to have a, a maximally truth-seeking AI. And um, I can't emphasize that enough. That's incredibly important. Um, and obviously build an AI that loves humanity. Um, and, um, you know, I, and I think these... So, so I'm a little concerned. That's why I created XAI, which is to, to have an AI that is maximally truth-seeking, um, that aspirationally does love humanity and will you know, seek the best interests of, of humanity going forward. You know, you just tweeted that you're doubling the size of the Colossus net, um, uh, cluster. Um, yeah. What are your it's thoughts? Already, we're, we're, we already have, with XAI, the most powerful training cluster in the world, and we're about to double it. Um, energy is a, a point of conversation here. Um, how yes. concerned are you about providing sufficient energy for the growing hungry clusters globally? Yeah, I think things, will, things are currently uh, chip limited, or, or, or they're not quite chip limited. They're, they're going to get to the point where they're limited by voltage transformers and installation. Um, and they will become limited by energy. Um, so there will be a tremendous amount of energy that's needed for, for uh, digital intelligence and for, um, and for also for electrification of transport. So those two things are a big deal. Um, yeah, we're gonna need a lot of energy. The, the long term, the, almost all the energy that we'll get is gonna come from the sun. Um, so it, it, one way to look at civilization is progress on the Kardashev scale. We're just so, barely getting to one. Well, we're far from, okay, from getting, I think we're probably, we might be close. We might, might I, I, I'm not, it's not clear to me we're above 1% on the Kardashev scale one. Because uh, Kardashev scale one means you've, you've harnessed all the power of a planet. I think we, I think we've probably harnessed 
less than 1% of the power of Earth. Um, now, Kardashev scale two is you've harnessed all the power of your sun. Um, the, the sun is overwhelmingly the, the largest source of energy in the solar system. Everything else is maybe amounts to about a trillionth of the energy in the solar system compared to the sun. Less, go, safely less than, less than a trillionth of all the energy is non-sun in our solar system. Yeah, we're using one eight thousandth of the sun's energy hits the Earth's surface, the Earth. Just that, that, just that hits the surface of the Earth. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But, and the, the, percent, the percentage of the sun's energy that hits the surface of the Earth is, um, is less than a trillionth of the energy that the sun produces. So um, almost all energy long term will be solar. We Lots call, of call it, it, round, it rounds up to 100%. So it rounds up to 100%. That, that's uh, how much of the energy in the future will be solar. Um, when you, when you view things from a Kardashev standpoint. You know, Elon, we have a number of national leaders, uh, corporate financial leaders from the Middle East here. What's your advice to the decision makers here in the room that don't want to miss the AI transformation and will be part of the leadership of that AI transformation? Do they need to build their own clusters here? Are they partnering? Yeah. I, I, well, I, I think there's probably all countries will have their own AI clusters over time. Um, it's currently very difficult to actually build an AI cluster and have it run. Um, it, 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 it's not like just pulling a computer out of a box. It, it, they, they are currently very difficult to run. Um, and you have to say, are you going to be training a frontier model? Because um, if you're training a frontier model, then you, you need a massive amount of compute and a level of technical skill that is only a few, a few companies possess. Um, so, but, but over time, I think every country will have uh, AI compute clusters. Um, it's, just, it's just going to be a, a normal thing that every country has. So, yeah. Um, so a basic infrastructure for every nation, like they have an electrical grid. Yeah, it'll be something like electricity or, you know, uh, just, or, or, you know, having an airline or something like that. It's every, every country will have uh, AIs or multiple AIs. So, um, and there will be a lot of robots. Will be a lot of robots, like, uh, but we had way more robots than people. Yeah, let's have that conversation a second because people are concerned about, uh, as you said, dwindling populations. AI and and robots have the potential to help support the GDP. Um, yes. Congratulations on Optimus Two and soon Optimus Three. Uh, your prediction on the number of robots by 2040, humanoid robots to be specific, what order of magnitude? By 2040. Yeah. So. Um, I think by 20, if you say like 2040, probably there are more humanoid robots than there are people. So on the so order of 10 I'd billion. Say, yeah. Yes. And your price point on these humanoid robots? You're, you're pretty good on pricing. Some, sometimes you're off on timing. <laughs> yeah, I'm... I'm I'm often optimistic on timing, but um, although, you know, the press will report when I'm late, but not when I'm early. Um, you know, for example, our Shanghai factory, uh, we thought it would take about a year and a half, and we did it in 11 months. Um, our Giga Nevada factory, we thought two years, we did it in 18 months. Um, or the Colossus you know, cl cluster. Texas, yeah. Texas factory, two years, we did it in 14 months. So I, I, I've been early actually many times. It's just that it's just not reported. Um, so when I when I make a prediction, I I try to figure out. I try to say what what is the fiftieth percentile likely, which means that half the time I should be wrong. Um, so I'm, I'm not sandbagging essentially. Um, um, so, but, but but I I think it's once you get out twenty forty, that's a long time from now. Um, over 25 years, 
there'll be at least 10 billion humanoid robots. Um, and and price, uh, price point? For class, yeah, the price point will be, I think, quite low. Um, probably twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars for a robot that can do anything. Um, we will be in a future, in, 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 assuming we are on the good path of AI. I think we will be in a future of abundance. You know, obviously, you wrote a book called Abundance, <laughs> so I think you would agree that that is probably the outcome. Um, that that uh, basically anyone will anyone will be able to have any goods and services they want. The the actual marginal cost of goods and services will be extremely low in the future.